welcome back to Race Week Illustrated Garage Talk. Now, normally the kind of racers you see here at Gresham Motorsports Park are fendered, full-bodied stock cars. Well, this past week, the Open Wheel Warriors took to the Jefferson High Banks as Cape Motorsports brought three Formula 2000 racers to Gresham in preparation of the tour's visit later this year to Lucas Oil Raceway Park outside of Indianapolis. Despite two of the three drivers not having set a wheel on an oval in their careers, all three soon got the hang of the tricky high banks, breaking track records for these type cars. We got a chance to talk with the drivers and team principals as their test session came to a close. Here's what they had to say. I definitely had uh, not very good impressions on oval racing, watching it from uh, TV and especially coming from a road racing background. Uh, I never really seen an oval in real life or a race, so I was a bit skeptical coming into it. But after driving an oval, I've got a totally different outlook on how you know oval racing is and, and what, it, what it is on TV. I just absolutely had a, a, an incredible experience and it was lots and lots of fun. Like I, It didn't really look that much fun from the outside, but driving and feeling the forces of the G's and the banking is just absolutely another feeling like it's you know I coming out of today I had a lot more fun than what I usually do at road racing circuits so I'm, I'm actually absolutely ecstatic and it's just a lot more fun than I expected expected yeah the one thing that caught my attention is how close you are to the edge all the time um, you know I had a little bit of an accident yesterday and tagged the wall and it was kind of like all happened so quickly and I still look back at it and don't really know exactly what caused it you know it just happened so quickly and boom, I was in the wall, so it's like you know, we're pushing each other. So I feel that you know we're we're definitely more than well prepared for this race. Um, the, the the tracks are pretty similar, and we got the setup was pretty close today. So I'm looking forward to it, and I think we should go well. Well, Gresham is a really fun track for me. I haven't been on oval for quite a while, so it's good to just get back into the groove. It's a lot different than the road courses, so. You know, it's my first time on an oval with this team, Cape Motorsports, and uh, you know they were able to teach me a lot as well. So it's it's all about being really smooth and precise, and I think I made some big improvements this weekend. We made quite a lot of changes uh, over the two days and got a lot of data, and uh, you know I think we'll be a step ahead when we get to IRP. What what's your impressions of just of this track? Yeah, I like it a lot. Like you said, it's pretty quick, and the banking is a bit different than anything I've been on before. Usually they're not quite so steep, but. You know, it's fun, it's fast. I had a couple of big moments out there, but luckily I didn't run into too much trouble. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was a lot of fun. It was great, you know, it really felt good. Uh, definitely a lot different of a feeling than anything you get on a road course. But, you know, I've run some tracks where it's kind of, you know, it, an oval and then you dive you know into the infield road course so I kind of knew like a little bit about how to run banking but definitely not a track like this you know this is uh, definitely a lot more challenging than you know I ever would have thought it was but you know it's definitely good to get the experience and be able to run on it so what what will you take away from this that'll help you up at uh, Indianapolis god I gotta say everything you know it's uh, it's incredible how much really goes into you know making a good oval driver and you know, I think this week the, the Capes definitely did a good job on teaching us everything they know about, you know, how to go about, you know, finding time in the track and, you know, doing all the starts and everything. So, you know, it's uh, it's good. I'm going to pretty much take everything I learned. There's not one thing that I already knew. So, you know, it, it's all going to go to Indy with me and hopefully we get a good result there. You know, I had a little bit of a moment up in turn two over there. So, uh, you know, that was a bit challenging. But other than that, you know, it went pretty smoothly. A couple of slides here and there, but, you know, nothing too too bad. Is this something you might want to come back and do sometime? Run a, uh, uh, a true short track car here, maybe? You know, I don't know. I'd love to have the opportunity to try one out, you know, see what it's like on the, you know, the other side of the spectrum, you know, away from open wheel. But, you know, it's all about, you know, when that time comes, really. But, yeah, I think it'd be great, especially on a track like this. Uh, Rick, you've been out here with uh, with the team testing today. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the relationship between Wayne Taylor Racing and, and Cape Racing. Uh, well, the, the two teams have been kind of bonded together for uh, three years now. And, uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time around the Capes. I, I came up through some of the ranks with uh, Imps Lights and NF2000 racing, racing for the Capes. It's really a great, great team here. Uh, and uh, just they got three really strong drivers here. Uh, testing at Gresham Motorsports Park and uh, had a really good day today. Actually broke the track record from all three drivers, so uh, looking forward to uh, you know using what we learned here to, to go to Indianapolis for the night before Indy. And how does that translate? The things that you learned here today, how well will that translate up at IRP? 
Uh, well, I mean, it, they're two very different tracks, but for some reason, you know, what it takes to go fast around here seems to apply over there at IRP. So uh, ho hopefully, you know, our guys can can keep it up and you know get a. I think the Cape's third win at Indy. Good deal. Now, now two two of your drivers had never been on an oval until they came here. What a place to throw them uh, kind of into the into the deep end on. I know my uh, my oval experience is very limited, but I mean. For two new oval drivers uh, coming here, it looks like a pretty tough place. I mean, not much room for error, pretty technical. I mean, there's a lot to this oval racing, and uh, uh, definitely, you know, Mickey here at the track really helped us out and, you know, got our drivers up to speed. Nicholas, you brought three drivers here to test to get ready for IRP. All three of them break the track record here, so obviously you must have taken, uh, learned some good things here to take up to IRP. Absolutely. Uh, all three are really good little steerers and uh, they showed a lot of patience in the beginning to get used to the oval and then it was time to get up on the chip to get up on the chip so it was really really good it was great two days of running and everybody did a great job how well does what you learn here translate up at IRP uh, well it's more for them getting used to going around around the setups are pretty similar but uh, other than that you know it's for them for them more than anything were there any moments uh, during the test where you kind of drew up a little bit and said uh oh well, there was a few squeaky bum moments, if that's what you want to call it, <laughs> and, uh, but we got through those all right. <laughs> Cape Motorsports will be in action on May 26th for the night before the 500 at Lucas Oil Raceway Park. It's their only visit to an oval of the season. Mother Nature was the only winner in a couple of Georgia tracks over the weekend. Among those, both Sonoya Raceway in Sonoya, Georgia, and Watermelon Capital Speedway in Cordial saw their scheduled events rained out. Action is set to return to both tracks this weekend. And we're joined again by General Manager Dan Elliott here at Gresham Motorsports Park. We're continuing to talk about the upcoming Racing Radio's 100 race weekend. Dan, for our viewers who might not be very savvy on this what is the difference between a super late model that we'll see here on may 12th and the pro late models we saw earlier you know brandon the main thing that is the difference in those cars is engine horsepower and that basically is about the only difference maybe the abilities of the driver because some of the pro drivers haven't run in the supers yet but horsepower equals speed so you're going to run this racetrack probably on the order of end of straightaway could be up to 10 miles an hour difference at end of straightaway speeds which equates to a lot faster entry times into the corners but the pro late models because of the horsepower they get through the corners extremely well the supers have a little bit more trouble negotiating that have a little bit more trouble hooking up coming off the corners also Kind of having a tip to through, tiptoe to the banks here at uh, exactly. GMP for sure. I know they're always seeming like they're on an edge, but some of those, some as we have kind of percolate down to the uh, lower division, some of the local divisions, they have less horsepower and it makes for a lot more fender to fender bang in action. Talk a little bit about the importance of those divisions. We see the trucks out here, mini stocks, renegades, so forth, all the way down throughout. Talk about that. You know, everybody can't afford to just jump into racing. You, you need to step in to where that you can learn a little bit about racing, also to the difference in the speeds, because you definitely don't want to come to a racetrack not being used to these speeds and being dumped in, just like some of these drivers that are here testing these open wheel cars, never seen a lap on the speedway. Some broke records, some broke cars. The walls are extremely hard, so you have to come in, you have to know your levels, but it gives the opportunity to move up at a level to which you can either afford or your ability suits. Now, Dan, Racing Radios has been a supporter of Gresham Motorsports Park for many years now. How glad are you to have them on board for this uh, opener for the Super Late Models? You know, Brandon, I've known the Thornton family now for probably close to 30 years, wow. and if I could say anything about them, it's, it's like family to me. And, and Chris and John and, and all the guys at Racing Radios, I, I can't thank them enough for what they've done for us here and throughout our career coming through, up through NASCAR because we basically came up through NASCAR together. Now, Racing Radios 100 is coming up in just a couple of weeks. Tell us about where we can find out more info, when it is, and just everything that a fan needs to know so they can be here for this big super late model opener this year. Best thing to do is go to our website, www.racegmp.com. Everything is on there. Ticket prices, schedules, track facility maps, everything that you need to find out is on there. And... Um, can't say any much more about it. And, and I, I pulled that up on my phone, by the way. There's a lot more right. ad adaptable way to use it on your cell phone now. So you can buy those tickets right there in your hand. Sounds good. Dan, 
thank you so much for, for letting us uh, come back over here and get in your way and talk about this race, and, and good luck on May 12th. Thank you, and thank you all for coming. All right, that's going to do it for us this week here on Race Week Illustrated Garage Talk. Next week, we'll look at results from around the world of motorsports. We'll catch up with another racer on our Pit Road Spotlight as well. Remember, for the latest racing news, check us out online, raceweekillustrated.com. He's Dan Elliott. He's Doug Turnbull. I'm Brandon Reed. This is Race Week Illustrated Garage Talk. We'll see you at the races.